Good morning, Highfield. It's good to come together as God's people, as God's family. Uh, And uh, you can come just as you are this morning, however you feel, uh, however you look, uh, it doesn't matter. You come, none of us here are perfect Um, or anywhere near it. And I speak from experience of myself. Uh, But we're, we're on a road together. Um, wanting to discover the truth, wanting to develop this relationship with our God through Jesus Christ. And um, we're not here to tell other people that they're wrong because we know that we're wrong too. So we just welcome each other and we serve each other and we encourage each other to follow this this walk, this travel along to uh, to find Christ as our saviour and uh, to fulfil our lives. Uh, Our purpose as a church is to bring people together and to Jesus Christ. So you are welcome, you are welcome on YouTube. Good to have you join us. There are a number of people away at the moment because it's holiday time. Uh, So I kind of welcome you because you're probably gonna join us sometime in the week and go on YouTube and uh, be part of the service in that way. We're going to start with uh, a song uh, across the land, Stuart Town and leading us, uh, because this God that we're worshipping this morning is our uh, author of creation, and uh, we want to serve him, we want to worship him, we want to lift up his name. So let's bring our voices uh, out this morning. Uh, I'm a little bit, uh, little bit tight in the throat from Friday still, uh, a lot better than I was yesterday, anyway, but... Uh, But nonetheless, it's good to give what we have to the Lord. So let's sing together.
those around you. Um, when you came in, I hope you got uh, one of these. Uh, it tells you what's going on this week. It also tells you what's not going on this week. Um, because it says that we've got uh, our games night again on Friday. And as great as that was, I am not doing it again this Friday. Uh, what an amazing night it was. And uh, we had a really full up ground up the back there. Uh, every seat table taken and uh, a really good, fun night. Kathy. I need to come and say, I don't know if it's saying it's going to share time. <laughs> I know, sorry, but you're just saying it now. But as a deacon, I'm coming to say this, and a big thank you. We don't realise what we have in Steve, in the things he does behind the scenes. He worked tirelessly through the week getting the games run, and Friday night, he didn't stop. We had loads of children, and he worked single-handedly, getting all the games going, and it worked seamlessly. Thank you so much from the church. Uh, yeah, you know, I just love doing God's work. I love being part of Highfield. Highfield kind of runs through my veins, so I would just give as much as I can uh, for that ministry. It was a great night. Uh, there were a lot of new people come and join us, a lot of people that, that gave their uh, information so that we can contact them again for future messy churches and so on as well. So uh, it, was, it was really good. Dave, want to say something? Yep. <laughs> What's that? Yes, there was. Out of our uh, the back garden here, he was on his climbing frame watching everything that we were doing as well. So, yeah. Good, good. So, yes, it's not this Friday. It was last Friday. You missed it if you weren't here. Um. But we do meet for uh, the Welcome Cuppa at, uh, on Tuesday at 10.30 and then our online, <clears throat> our online prayer meeting is at 7.30 on Wednesday. Um, Ali is going to Canada on Tuesday. Uh, I'll be going down to Gatwick Airport with her uh, on Tuesday morning at some very early hour. Um, she's hoping to call in this morning. She's, she's working at uh, overnight she has been uh, so um, do pray for her travels as she goes on Tuesday uh, and we start this new series today uh, winning the war of your mind and I really have been challenged by this series excited by this series and I hope it really impacts in a positive way uh, us and all of those who are watching as well uh, online and as I put in the notes, tell your world about Highfield. Uh, you know, what you experience here, what you experience online, pass it on to other people, your world, whoever that is, fam family, friends, contacts. Uh, just pass on what, what's going on here at Highfield so that others may know about it. This month I've remembered to say about the... Oh no, no, I'm, I'm ahead of myself. I'm glad you put declare up. I'll be going through the service without any declare time. Let's, no, let's do what I was going to do, and then we'll go back to declare. Uh, this month I've remembered birthdays. I gave Richard the slide for the birthdays, and it won't accept it on the PowerPoint. That's it. That's good. So um, we won't have the slide. I'll, I'll make a new one for next month. Uh, but uh, let's, let's see who's got birthdays in August. Anyone? Sheila's birthday in August, and they're away. Norma, Norma sorry, Norma. <laughs> uh, so Norma's birthday, right? We can sing happy birthday to you. And if Sheila joins us on YouTube at some point, uh, she can receive that. So let's let's sing those words. Most of you know the the song by now, anyway, without the words really on the screen. <laughs> What's that? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> so let's sing this together. I can get this right. Okay. 
Happy birthday, happy birthday, we wish you a happy birthday, and we thank God too for his love for you. God give you a happy birthday. And if it's your birthday in August, then accept that from us as well. Okay, <clears throat> give my voice a rest. Uh, we're going to have our time of declaring now. This is a time when we just bring our praise to God, when we declare who he is, and when we just uh, share something with the Lord, not with each other, when we share with him. Thank you, Lord, for being who you are. Um, so we declare that. If you want to flip open the Bibles of Psalms and find a line in there, that's fine. Uh, if you want to use something that we've just been singing in one of the songs, then that's fine as well. But let's just praise the Lord in this time of declaration. Our Father God, we, we come before you with grateful hearts. Many of us are just thankful each day for who you are and what you, what you mean to us. For that relationship that we develop with you through Jesus. And so, Lord, by your Holy Spirit, prompt us in these next few moments to lift up our praise, our thanksgiving, and just to say who you are to us, because we come in the name of Jesus. We come to our time of communion um, now, and as we do so, we're going to sing our next song. Um, and during the singing of that song, <clears throat> during the singing of that song, we will uh, take up our offering opportunity to worship the Lord as we remember what Jesus gave for us we want to give him a gift a sacrificial gift in return so let's sing thank you Jesus for the blood was a wretch I remember who I was I was lost I was blind I was running out of time sin separated the breach was far too wide but from the far side of the chasm you held me in your side so you made a way across the great divide, left behind heaven's throne to build it here inside. And there at the cross, you paid the debt I owed, broke my chains, freed my soul for the first time I had. Thank you, Jesus, you 
from the darkness into glorious light. So we come to we come to remember that amazing moment in history when God sent his son here to earth and yes to teach and heal and to prove who he was but ultimately to go to the cross that his sacrificial blood on the cross shed would mean that we are set free that we are forgiven, that we have a way. He is the way to heaven. And so we come and share in this meal. I remember that just really moments before Jesus went out and was arrested and taken to the cross, he shared a meal with his disciples. We believe it was the, the Passover meal. To remember the time when God spared the firstborn of his people many, many years before. And here was now Jesus taking some of the elements from that table, the bread and the wine, and saying, now this is a moment you need to remember. Because my blood the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world is going to be spilled. And through that, you will be saved. And so we come this morning as God's people to share in this simple meal. And before Jesus shared it, we're told that he took the bread. He gave thanks. And we will do the same now. Father God, thank you that you love us. We recognize that we are far from perfect, far from perfect. And on our own course, we would not be able to enter into your presence. And yet we are reminded through this simple meal that we are forgiven, that we are washed white as snow that we have access into your amazing godly presence and so as we eat and as we drink remind us and help us be thankful for your love your sacrifice your forgiveness in Jesus name Amen. Having given thanks, Jesus took the bread. This is my body, he said. For you. Take and eat. You will be served with the bread. Just put your hand out. If you know the Lord Jesus Christ, just put your hand out. Take and eat and be thankful.
tells us that after they finished that meal, Jesus took the cup and poured wine into it. And he said, this, this is the new covenant in my blood. Covenant's an agreement, a contract, put simply, a promise. And Jesus, knowing what was about to happen, said, this is the new covenant in my blood. Whenever you eat, whenever you drink, remember what I did for you. And it is through the blood that we are adopted into God's family. We become brothers and sisters in Christ Jesus. And so as we're served this morning, let us take the cup and hold on to it until we are all served as God's family here. And then we can drink together. covenant the blood of Christ thank you Jesus for your blood shall we all pray this is a prayer for embrace in the present Dear Father in heaven, source of light and love, we come before you at this moment in time, seeking your guidance and wisdom. Grant us the strength to let go of the past, to release regrets that have collected in our hearts, to find forgiveness both for others and ourselves, and to cherish that which we have today. Each breath that we take, the beauty that surrounds us, the people we share life with at this moment, the gifts that you give us each new day. May we find contentment in life's smallest details, the warmth of sunlight, the whispering of the wind, the colour of a flower, the taste of our cup of tea or coffee. Dear Lord, we surrender our worries and fears. For in this moment, we trust that you are near. Grant us the serenity to accept what we cannot change and the courage to embrace the present, what we have right now. With gratitude, we offer this prayer today, thanking you for your presence on our lives. In this moment and every moment to come, help us live in your love, with your peace and for your purpose. Amen. <clears throat> Thank you. You know, when we come to worship, when we come around the, the, the table of communion, we, we recognize that relationship we have with God, and we say so we can have access to Him, um, and we can have a wonderful, loving relationship with Him, and all of that is true. But also it's true that our God, our Heavenly Father, is holy, holy, holy. And he's not the same as any other human, if you like, that we know. That relationship that we have with him is a holy relationship. And so let's, uh, let's sing those words, holy, holy, holy.
Lord, can you hear me? I'm here, fighting, pressing to remember what you said. But this onslaught of thoughts fills my head with dread and I need you. Like enemies encamped, shrouded in the dark, I can feel the fascination of too many temptations reaching for my heart. So I need you to hear me. For I know your ears are attentive to the righteous and I know that your ways are certain. Even when my worries would trample me to dust, still, I know you are good. Your hand is just. So come now, be the salvation for my sins. Help me to begin again, that you would mend this trend of hopelessness. God, deliver me in my brokenness. I can feel your presence, even now in the ugly, in the mess that has been made. You surround me with your benevolence. Yes, your love is on display, and I can see it. Carving roads through the struggles and the troubles, past temptations and devices that seek to choke me out. So come fear, come failure, come opposition or doubt. Jesus, you are my deliverance. Your grace is sufficient. Trusting you is my only way out. Now I turn my mind to dwell on your truth. Curate the condition of my heart to manifest joy. Be my living proof. Subdue the haters. Quell the voices inside. Transform me, Lord. Extinguish my pride. You've won the battle. I trust in your plans. Yes, God. I surrender all my worries, my woes, and my demands into your eternally capable hands. Let's bow in prayer. Loving Father who knows each one of us so well, understands us more than we understand ourselves. I pray that this new series that we start on today may touch our lives, may renew our minds, that we will look back at this series as something that has changed who we are and how we think and how we behave. Lord, minister to us by your spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. The battle, the war of our minds. So many things go on in our minds. I saw a maths book the other day. It looked really sad because it was full of problems. But how many of us are full of problems? Full of things going on in our head. So we're starting this new series to run through the summer into September, the beginning of September. And it's about these, these battles, this war that goes on inside us. Maybe as a Christian, you, you know the battle of your mind that goes on regularly. A battle between faith and fear. Many want to trust the Lord for their life, but they know the battle that goes on because they still want to control. They're fearful, and so you kind of hold on to things. You know that one, don't you? You want to put your faith in God, but you also want some control. 
How many have at one time felt full of spiritual confidence and the next full of doubts and insecurities that hold us back? Our mind is a battlefield. How many of you already know that to be true? The truth is that most of life's battles, most of our life's battles, are lost or won in our mind. So here's what we're going to do during this series. We're going to try getting into the mind of the Apostle Paul. Paul was a thinker with an incredible mind to reason things through. But he knew that there was a war raging in his mind too. And he spoke of it quite often. To show that, I want you to turn with me to the Bible. Uh, so whatever it is, is the paper one, there's the spare ones on the side, there's one scattered around, you've got your phones, your tablets, whatever. We will have it on the screen, but there's nothing like having it in your hand. And we're going to read two versions of Romans chapter 7 and verse 15 to 20. Two versions. I'm going to read what we normally read, the New International Version. It's a good literal translation of the original text that we get uh, in Scripture. But it's, I think, a little less clear for this passage of Paul's meaning when we try to grapple in modern English, so to speak. So I'll read that, and then I've asked Mark if he will come and read the contemporary English version, which I often dip into, which I think in this case makes Paul's words clearer. So Mark, if you'd like to come up here while I read this, and then you can carry on afterwards, perhaps come and stand over here. I'll read the NIV first and then I can carry on and read again those, those words in the contemporary English version. But before we read any of it, yeah, come on. Uh, let's, let's say these words. I hold God's word in my hands. It encourages, corrects and instructs me. Lord, speak to me now. The words of Paul writing to the Roman church. Romans 7, verse 15. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree the law is good. As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. For I know that good itself does not dwell in me. That is my sinful nature, in my sinful nature. For I have the desire to do what is good, but I cannot carry it out. For I do not do the good I want to do, but the evil I do not want to do. This keeps on doing. Okay, let's have the contemporary English version. Romans chapter 7, verse 15 to 20. In fact, I don't understand why I act the way I do. I don't do what I know is right. I do the things I hate. Although I don't do what I know is right, I agree that the law is good, so I am not the one doing these evil things. The sin that lives in me is what does them. I know that my selfish desires won't let me do anything that is good. Even when I want to do right, I cannot. Instead of doing what I know is right, I do wrong. And so if I don't do what I know is right, I am no longer the one doing these evil things. The sin that lives in me is what does them.
It's kind of quite a text to grapple with, isn't it? Even in a more simplified English. But you know what he's saying. That's the war that is going on in our minds, right? We kind of all experience that. We know what we should be doing. We know what we should be doing. But we keep on doing things that we should not. So during this series, we're going to take a look at Paul as he goes through life, waging war against the lies that attack his mind. Let me say that again. We're going to look at Paul going through life and thinking about the, the, the lies that are waging war on him. Our lives, each one of us, our lives, are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. Take that in for a moment. Our lives are always moving in the direction of our strongest thoughts. What we think tends to play out in our life. We might not even realize it, but maybe now I've mentioned it, you might want to think that through. Because both science and scripture agree on that. Studies show that a lot of our problems are actually related to a wrong pro thought process going on inside us. Our problems are a result of wrongful thought patterns going on in our lives. Some relational challenges, some eating disorders, some addictions, some forms of anxiety, and so on and so on, are actually a direct result of our toxic thinking. That's what modern science tells us, but it's also what God's word tells us. And that got there a long time before science got there. Proverbs, verse, uh, chapter 4 and verse 23. It uses the word heart, but you understand what it's going to say now. Guard your heart, in other words, your inner thoughts, what's going on inside, for everything you do flows from it. What's going on inside, whether you recognize it or not, flows out of our life. Guard your heart, for everything you do flows from it. So your thought patterns, what is going on in your mind and your heart, flows out of it. You might not recognize it. Others might, but you might not. But we need to stop and think it through, which is why we're doing this series. In the Bible, it talks about having positive thoughts, keeping our thoughts more positive than negative. Because it says that will cultivate a godly mindset. You know one of my favorite passages of scripture is uh, Philippians 4 verse 8 where it says, think about, think about what is noble, what is pure, what is right, what is lovely, what is true. Think about those things. The writer in Philippians is saying, get your thought patterns right. Think about the noble and the true and the pure and the lovely things. Because if you keep your thought patterns positive rather than negative, then you will cultivate a godly mindset that will reflect in the things you do and your actions. Our life is often a reflection of what we think. So, some examples. If we always feel like we are a victim, we'll likely become a victim. If we believe that we can overcome things by the power of Christ within us, we can overcome things. The life we live out is so often a reflection of 
what we're thinking. So today I want to encourage you. I want to encourage you just to stop and think about what you think about. Think about what you think about. Let me show you three different categories to try and determine the type of person you are. There is no right or wrong. You don't have to open up and say, yes, that's me. I'm just going to show them to you and I want you to think about what you think about in these three categories. Okay? Um, so don't worry. Some of you are already overthinking. But just be honest with yourself. Because there's no point in lying to yourself. Be honest with yourself. Um, so the three categories. I've not tried this out, so it doesn't work. I'm sorry. So the first category is um, at one end of the scale is anxious. The other end of the scale is relaxed. Where are you on that scale? One end of it is that you wake up and as you wake up in the morning, you're kind of anxious already. That's the ex extreme, if you like, the furthest down that scale. So as soon as you wake up, oh, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. And you're already anxious before you get out of bed. Your morning has hardly started and you're just stressed up. And you... The other end of the scale, and you know it's a scale, this is not just polarising people. On the other end of the scale, you wake up just relaxed. I in bed for a while, pray, just snuggle up. Yeah, this is great. Life is good. You look outside the window and you smile. And if problems start to arise during the day, you give it to God, you'll be fine. So you can see this is one end of the scale to the other, okay? Where are you on that scale? Can you place yourself on that scale from being really anxious or really relaxed? And obviously it's going to be somewhere probably in the middle for most people. But just place yourself there. And you don't have to say anything. You don't have to tell anybody. It just gives you an idea of what type of person, how you think. We're thinking through how you think. Are you char characterised by worry and panic and fear? Or are you typically characterised by being peaceful, relaxed? Okay, so that's, that's, I told you I hadn't done this before. Okay, it worked. Next scale. Whoop, I haven't tried on it. I'm going to get it all in my feet. Next one. One into the scale. It's the other end of the scale. Basically, are you, a glass, uh, are you a glass half empty or a half full person? Or somewhere in the middle? Okay. So, do you find yourself uh, being negative or critical of people most of your time? Are you kind of often sort of pointing fingers, finding faults? Oh yeah, that's wrong. Are you the one that complains a lot? Are you the one that kind of picks out people's problems and so on? That's, that's a negative. Uh, do you wake up in the morning going, oh, another day? Or are you a positive person, generally? Somewhere along that scale. Rather than assuming the worst is going to happen, ah, oh, this is a new opportunity. This is a new day today. Something good's going to happen. And you see the good in people. You see the potential in the day that you're getting up to. That there's going to be achievements, there's going to be new experiences you're going to go through. So, so place yourself on the, the positive negative scale. Some of you might be up here, some of you might be here, some of you might be here, some of you might be down there. Be truthful. It's not my, not my issue, it's, I've, I've sought myself out. You, you sort yourself out, okay? Name where you are. One more. One more.
When it comes to your thoughts on this scale, do you think more about worldly things as in possessions, money, appearances, your popularity, all those kind of worldly things. I'm not saying they are necessarily wrong, but is your thought pattern always focused on the worldly thing? How you look, what money you got in the bank, all that sort of thing. Or are you thinking more heavenly things? You thinking more or less about temporary and more about eternal? It's another way of putting it. It's not that, you know, you get up and all day you're praying or singing hymns. That's not what I'm saying. It's whether you're thinking about all the worldly things and what you wear and what, you, you know, what you're going to be doing and how much money's coming in and what you're going to pay the bills and all those sort of things. And if that's always on your focus, the worldly temporary things that will be gone in a few days' time anyway or whatever, and you'll move on. Or we're thinking more about the eternal things. What God wants you to do. How God wants you to behave. Three scales. Where are you on that scale? Worldly, eternal. Perhaps a bit of it that way. Temporary, eternal. I don't know. You know what I mean. Again, we're just trying to discern how your mind, how my mind, where it takes us in a day. Our thoughts are usually a compass in the direction that we take in life. So if you're anxious, if you're negative, if you're worldly, if those thoughts are going on in your mind on a regular basis, guess what direction your life's going to take? If you are more calm or positive or you have more eternal thoughts about things rather than temporary thoughts, again, guess which direction you're going to be going in. Now here's the question. I mean, just thought about it for a few moments. Are you happy with the direction your thoughts are taking you? Are you happy with the direction of your life? Work through from your thoughts, your thought patterns. See, over the next few weeks, we're going to go on a journey. Looking at, as I say, the Apostle Paul and asking God to renew our mind with the truth. Are you willing to travel this journey with me? Oh, that's very quiet, that is. Yes. You're a bit nervous now, and you can tell. Are you willing to travel this journey with me? Yes. You too. Okay. I, I mean, yes, you're rightly hesitant. Because as I've said already, and I've put in on social media and so on, this literally, this series literally has the potential to change your life. Not what I say. This series and how God works through you literally has the potential to change your life. So we're going to lay some foundations this morning. Foundations are important. We saw that only a few weeks ago when we were talking about foundations and the sand and all that that I was building here. This foundation is what we can build on in the next few weeks. Okay. <coughs> So just going to give you two foundational thoughts today. The first one is, what thoughts, what thoughts hold you back? What thoughts hold you back? See, inside your mind, there are all sorts of thought patterns, all sorts of paths. We'll go through them at some point. But some of those thought patterns you need to identify, maybe just pick up on one today, that hold you back. That they're like an anchor. Like every time you want to do something, this thought comes in your mind and it holds you back from doing it. Maybe it's a thought pattern, I'm not good enough. Maybe it's a thought pattern, my past is too bad for God to use me. Maybe I can't trust the people around me. So that holds you back, that thought pattern. I battle with how I look. 
with my appearance. That may be a thought pattern that holds you back from doing, saying, being, whatever. Thought pattern may be, I'm always messing up. I'm a big mess up in life. And that holds me back from even trying to do something because I know it's going to end up a mess. So, so name those kind of negative thought patterns. Just, just one, just a couple, if you like, this morning. In your own mind. Using your mind a lot to them. Because this is important and we will visit, again, visit it again next Sunday. This thought pattern is important. So we'll really look into it next week. But start to think now and during the next few days, what thought patterns are holding me back? What thought patterns are sending me in a certain direction that I don't want to go? What thought patterns stop me from achieving something? Maybe you'll need these next few days to think about that. Because physically, these negative thought patterns that are holding you down are changing the chemical makeup of your brain. I'm not a scientist, I've read this, all right? The negative thoughts that are in our minds change the chemical makeup of our brain. And when we think a positive thought, again, just think about it for a moment. When we think a positive thought, we get this kind of surge of rewarding neurotransmitters releasing, right, releasing dopamine. Have you heard of dopamine before? And what you get is a buzz, a thrill, when dopamine is released into our minds. So someone compliments you look, your looks, and you get some dopamine. This is great, this is good, and suddenly everything starts, yeah, I mean, I'm on a bit of a high here. Someone says, you're a great friend. Dopamine comes in. Something good happens in your life. You achieve something, you get somewhere. Dopamine, okay? What is so interesting is the more often you think a thought, Science tells us it's easier to think that thought again. We have thought patterns. So once you think a thought, we're starting to create a path, a, a neural path in our brain. And the more often we think that thought, the more there is a connection in our brain. And it's easier then to think that connection again. And before long, whatever we have been thinking, if we keep thinking it over and over again, it becomes a, de a default thought. No, a default thought. Get what I mean? I mean, if I walk out of my front garden, and my front door, and I walk towards the gate, if I walk across the lawn, if I do it for the next hundred days and keep walking that path backwards and forwards across the grass a hundred times, it would create a path. You'd be able to see where I walk. Some of you have delivery guys or something cut, cut through the path and go on the, off the concrete and on your grass. You can see where they go because they're going back and forwards. But if I, if I cross a path, if I make a path in like a hundred days, that path's going to be there. If I thought the same lie in my head for a hundred days, I create this neural pathway through my brain and it becomes the default path. I've been thinking this all through my life. I've been thinking this for the last whatever years. That, that path has been connected now. It's a default path. So with God's help, I hope we are going to as it says in scripture, renew our minds. Paul talks about renewing our minds so that we get off the old path and we make a new path, a positive path, a helpful path. Because if I stay off my path that I've created and I go somewhere else for 100 days, you know what's going to happen there? You're going to create another path. 
And the same thing happens with our neural pathways in our mind. We've got to get off the old paths which have caused chaos in our lives. And we've got to say, I'm, I'm getting off that path. It's going to be a fight, it's going to be a battle, but I'm going to get off that path and I'm going to create a new one. And Paul said in Romans 12 and verse 2, he said it this way, do not be conformed to the patterns, the thought paths of this world. Do not be conformed to it. You've been treading it all this time and you've just done it because everyone else has done it and you just thought that was the way it was well, in your life and I can't help it. And, and, and Paul is saying, don't follow the wrong paths anymore. You know they're wrong. Don't, don't get into the pattern of this world. How do you do that? He says, by the renewing of your mind. By setting new paths. Renew by training your mind to get off that destructive, negative path and create something new. Now that's going to take some work. This month could be quite a hard work. It's not a holiday for you. And we're going to create some new paths of truth which get off the old path of destruction you feel bad about yourself and when that happens your bad path directly kicks in so you're at home one day not one day on a regular basis and you, and you feel down you feel miserable so you go up, take a path to the freezer where the ice cream is or to the cupboard where the chocolate is because that makes you feel better temporarily. You know, oh, that, that's my path. Yeah, when, when I know it's the wrong path. I know it's not going to help me. But it's the path that I kind of have created now over the last few months, years or whatever. When you get through that path, you feel bad about yourself, don't you? So that didn't work. You've created a bad path. Something goes wrong in your life. You go to this natural path that's been there for the last 100 days, 100 months, whatever. And, and you just give in to that path. It's a bad path, but it's a well-trodden path. So in this example, what you would perhaps do, and it's up to you, because it's, it's, you've got to work out between you and the Lord what's the best path for you to get off of this bad one. But maybe instead of when you feel bad, you walk to the freezer or the chocolate cupboard, you go to the front door and you get some air and you go out and you walk around the block and come back again. Or you do a bit of exercise, because we know that those things actually help our minds. And you get off the old, well-trodden path that you know is just more destructive. Say, so, okay, this is going to be hard work, but I'm not going that way. I'm going to get on this new path, and I'm going to start creating for the next hundred days. I'm going to keep walking this path. And if I keep walking this path, I will get off that old path. Because when you exercise, when you, when you start ex using your body and doing different things like that, you start getting some adrenaline, you start getting some dopamine. And you feel better about yourself. I've created a new path now, I feel good. When I feel down, I'm gonna go out and I'm gonna walk around the block. And that feels better. It's a positive path. Maybe your path is some addiction some bad habit and it's your go-to path when you're alone and you're feeling down you just give in to that path it's become an addiction over the last hundred days hundred months whatever and it's your go-to path in your weaker moments so here's your assignment for this week you can see it coming identify the biggest stronghold that's holding you back, whatever it is, whether it's a thought that you have about yourself or, or whatever, okay? Identify that. Go home, think about it, pray about it. What thought pattern holds me back in life? Don't, if there's more than one, don't, don't go through a whole list of them because you'll get confused. Just pick up one for now. That's a well-trodden path that you take regularly, isn't it?
and your path might be a place that you go. It might be a belief that you're not loved by anybody and you tread down that path and it's destructive. It might be that you feel hopeless, helpless, worthless. That's, that's a bad path, but you might tread it quite a lot. It might even be that you think life is pretty pointless for you. And you've trodden that path for a long while. And it's a well-worn path. So identify that one stronghold this week and name it. Because you can't defeat it. We can't have a battle with it if you don't know what it is. You haven't named it. You've got to name your enemy. What you're going to fight with in this battle. And then the second part of your assignment, once you've named what holds you back, is this. Name the truth. This is going to be quite hard, perhaps. Name the truth that demolishes that lie. Name the truth that's going to bring down that stronghold. Because Jesus said in, in John 8 and verse 32, you'll know the truth and what does the truth do? It sets you free. From the path. If you actually identify what the truth is, not just what your brain's been telling you or someone else has been telling you and so you've got this pathway now going on. Don't accept that as a lie. Say, I want to find out actually the truth about me. And I'm going to talk with my creator about it. Because that lie I've been treading for years has really put you in spiritual bondage, hasn't it? I mean, some of you here, maybe, or here, are living out a life based on a lie. Well, I was told this. I grew up like that. My partner told me that. My friends told me that. I saw on Facebook what people thought of me. Whatever. And I've been treading this lie. So we need to discover the truth and start walking that truth. Because walking the truth will set us free. Of course, that, that change of path is not going to be easy, is it? We've been in a rut. We've just been going up and down that path. We know what all the lies are, all the feelings, all the senses we have in our head, and we've just been doing that. And to get off that path, especially the path is now about that high, it's going to be hard. It's well trodden. It's going to be a fight. It's going to be a battle. So this series is not, as I say, a summer holiday. It's, it's a fight to win back your mind. And therefore your life, because what we think is how we act out. And if your path has been, I'm weak, I'm not good enough, I've messed up, I'm a mistake, that's it, that's your lie. And the truth is, although we will never be perfect, and I've already said that today, the truth is God, our creator, loves you. And he values you, he values you. It doesn't matter what you think other people think. Read the truth in the Bible. It's there in black and white over and over and over again. God loves you. He values you. He has a purpose for you in life. Do you know what your purpose is? I talked a little bit about this on Friday night. Do you know what your purpose is in life? Or have you just given up? Ah, oh, I'm useless. I haven't got any purpose. That's a lie. That is a lie. You've got a purpose. So we need to create a new path, renew our minds that says, I'm special to God. He has plans for me. He will give me the strength to get through this path and walk with me every day with determination. I am not who other people say I am. I am not the liars in my mind that tell me what I am. I am who God says I am, his child, his chosen. And that's the truth. 
and the truth will set you free. I cannot have a positive, faith-filled life when I have negative, fear-filled mind. So capture that lie this week. Name it. And start to replace it with a new path, a new truth. Okay? We're going to start treading a new path. Let's pray. Father, I pray right now that you would begin a work of renewing our minds. We know that our old path has been well trodden for a long time. And it may take quite a while to get out of that path and start a new one. But I pray that over the next few weeks, as we look at your word, as we discuss it with others, as we pray with you, our minds will be renewed over this summer. Lord, today I'm turning away from my sinfulness and I'm turning towards Jesus. That's being a Christian, a Christ follower. I'm no longer going to, going to believe the lies about myself, but I'm trusting in Jesus Christ to be my way to full, eternal life. He is the truth, and the truth will set me free. Amen. Amen. And if any of you, and any of you online have... Prayed that prayer with a real sense, yes, I want to have Jesus with me in my life. I want to have that relationship with him. Then you are starting on a new path of being a Christian. It'd be great for you to talk with me afterwards or chat online or leave a message on YouTube or wherever to sort of acknowledge that so I can just talk you through a few things. Let's sing our last song, a positive, forever, eternal song. Give thanks to the Lord. Give thanks to the Lord, our God and King. His love endures forever For He is good, He is above all things His love endures forever Sing praise, sing praise With a mighty hand and outstretched arm His love endures forever For the light that's been reborn His love endures forever Sing praise Sing praise Sing praise Sing praise Forever God is faithful Forever God is strong His love endures forever By the grace of God we will carry on His love endures forever
His love endures forever. 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 See why in some songs we repeat it. It's setting a path. His love endures forever. It's in the scripture. Psalm 119 just keeps saying it. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. Get that path right, that truth. And remember the truth. He's always faithful. He's always strong. He's always with us. And we know that the Lord has promised every step you take in that path, every place that you go along that path, he says, I am with you in your defeats. Yeah, you're going to have them. But in your victories, in your bad times, yeah, you're going to have them. But also in your good times, in your dark days, yeah, there's going to be darkness around you at times. But there's going to be light days. And I'm going to be with you in all of them. Amen. 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 Bless you.